verse 25 of Hebrews, or uh, let's go down to verse 27 of Hebrews chapter 12. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken. As of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. I'm so thankful today that what he's saying in the first verse is everything that's man made and temporary. It's being shaken. We're living in that time. We don't know what the next seven months are going to bring. I, I feel an uneasiness just a little bit. What is coming? We've got wars all over the world. We've got things happening internally. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken. But we have received the kingdom. Now, if you haven't, you can't shout on that part. But if you have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and my family's in that kingdom. My marriage is in that kingdom. My life is in that kingdom. And it does not mean that we're immune from trouble and storms and difficulties and adversities. But whatever life brings, I have received a kingdom, a structure, a foundation that cannot be shaken. I want to preach today on how to be unshakable. Because you see, the foundation that we build our life on matters. That's why in Matthew 7, it talks about there are only two foundations that people build their homes and their lives on. He talks about building your home on the rock. And he said... And when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, it didn't fall for it was founded, it was structured on the rock. But to every one of these sayings of mine who hears it and they don't do them, they're like a fool who builds their house on sand and the rain descended, the floods came. Notice they go through the same thing. We're not immune. We, we, don't, we don't get a get out of free, get out of jail free, get out of pain free, get out of suffering free card because we're Christians. We're going to all go through it in life. But the only difference between the two is what they're building their lives on. One is sand and one is the rock. And it said that the one on sand fell and it was a great fall. The other one stood through the extreme storm. When you walk into a room like this in any of our campuses or any home, you, you seldom think of structure. You seldom think of foundation. You, it really doesn't matter to you. You don't care about what's up under the cement, the rowbar, rubar, the, the, the... I'm not a builder, obviously, but you don't think about all that stuff. Even this building, there's steel and stuff and all kinds of things that you can't see. It's the structure of the building that makes it stand. You see the carpet, you see the seats, you see the stage, you see the lights, etc. But it is the structure support that holds everything up. It's just like your body. You see the outward part, the skin, the face, the hair, the clothes. But it's your skeleton which is your structure, if, if you lose that, you have nothing. You have nothing. The same is true of a church. The same is true of a home. And the amazing thing about storm shelters, extreme storm shelters, is when they're giving the way that they have to be constructed, they're told not to use air nail guns. I thought that was interesting that when 
you're building a hurricane shelter, a shelter that must absolutely guarantee that it's going to be there. It'll be there through terrible storms and hell force winds. There's nothing wrong with an air nail gun, a nail gun. There's nothing wrong with it. Pop, 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 pop. And it's up quick. I think it's a brilliant invention. And that's good if you want, uh, if you want something for uh, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. It might last 50 years with a nail gun. Pop, 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 pop. But if you're going to build something that's going to endure the most extreme worst storms, you got to go not with the new modern tools that run on batteries, but you got to get the old hammer and nail out. It's pretty amazing. The old method is the one that you want to trust when the storm comes, when all hell is breaking loose. I don't need to know that my whole life is built on just a pop, pop, pop of a little bit of religion. But I need that old hammer and that nail and that cross. I need something that will outlast the storm. If you're just building a temporary church, pop, 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 the latest, greatest, whatever. But Free Chapel is not a temporary church. I am not a cutting edge preacher <laughs> and I'm not up here trying to build a fly by drive by church. I still believe the church is essential. I still believe that without the church, the nation goes to hell. I still believe without the church, the family disintegrates. I still believe without the church, the gates of hell will prevail. And if you're just building a temporary church and we've seen them pop, 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 use the air gun and it'll be fine and it'll last for a little while and then like the Tower of Babel, it'll fall. But we're not interested in building that kind of church. If you're going to build a safe structure that will withstand the storm, you don't need new gadgets you don't need new methods. You need a hammer and you need a nail. You need something that you know will withstand the storm. I'm not building a garage. I can't just have pop, pop, pop religion. Just come on Sunday, pop, and that's it, and I'm good. But it's the hammer and the nail because the carpenter's son said, I will build my church in Matthew 16. I will build my church, and I'm not going to use a nail gun. I, God Almighty, am going to come in a skin suit to planet Earth. The Bible said, Jesus thought it not robbery to be equal with God. In other words, and then it said, all of the Godhead was in him. All of God put on an earth suit, and for 30 years, he did not preach a sermon. He created the universe. He hung the world on nothing. He spoke the world into existence, created man, but now he's on planet earth in skin and flesh and blood. Jesus was 100% the, out, the flesh part of Jesus was 100% man. The spirit part was 100% God. And for 30 years, he doesn't heal. He doesn't do anything. Why? Because it's not a pop, pop, pop nail gun deal he's building. And for three and a half years, he goes. And then he says, I'm going to build me a church. And the devil didn't know that the thing that he was going to use was a hammer, three nails, and two beams called a cross. And he said, that will become the structure that if you build your life on, if you flesh out your life 
as long as the foundation and the structure of your life is that cross and that hammer and those three rusty nails and the blood that I shed, I promise you it's a storm shelter that will withstand anything hell can bring against you and your family. The Bible put it like this in Isaiah, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I want you to clap your hands if you believe in the foundation that is unshakable. I want to hear today the words of Jesus. I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail. The church is not these buildings. The church is you. The church is you and your marriage. The church is you and your family. The church is your children and your grandchildren. I will build my church with a hammer and a nail. And it's not going to be quick. You'll go through things and sometimes you pray and it's pop, pop and you get a quick answer. But you know you're really getting strong when God allows the hammer and nail to start. And the hammer and nail is blood, sweat, and tears. The hammer and nails, sometimes you miss and it's bloody and it's, and it's hurtful and it's painful and you're suffering and you're going through long days and long nights and it's, and it's just exhausting. But when God doesn't give you the quick pop, pop, nail gun answer, know that he's building a structure in your family for generations. This isn't a quick throw up garage. This is a generational blessing. And every time you open up this book, you you're using the hammer and the nail. And every time you come to church, it's not just a pop pop, but this is what we do. This is who we are. This is what family is supposed to do, is bring your family and worship. You are building an eternal house. Noah was commanded by God to build an ark for the saving of his family, the text said. And it was not a nail air gun. It was a hammer and nail approach. And it took them 120 years. Can you imagine the people who were making fun of them? Can you imagine the people who were saying, how stupid? Why do y'all still go to church? Why do you still pray? Why do you still fast? Why do you still read the Bible? I'm telling you, we're living in that time where the, the, the little nail gun religion of just go to church on Easter and go to church and love God in your own way and do your own thing. But there's something to the old method of the hammer and the nail and just saying we're going, we're going. And, and, and especially if you want a house that's going to endure. I cannot promise you you won't go through stuff. I cannot promise you your kids won't go through stuff. I cannot promise you your marriage won't go through stuff. I can promise you that if you're building it on the right structure and foundation, hell can hit you with its best shot. The old wolf, the devil can huff and puff, but he will not blow your house down because Jesus himself, the carpenter, their son said the gates of hell. It's a guarantee your family and your home will still be standing. Turn to somebody and say you've got the guarantee. That's a big deal. I love that when Noah built it, got his family inside of it, everybody was mocking them and making fun, but you know the storm came. And when the storm came, they went in a minority, but they came out a majority. And the only thing the storm did was get rid of their critics. I'm telling you that we have a structure, folks. I can't even promise you the government. I can't even promise you the nation is going to be remaining a hundred years from now. But should the Lord tarry his coming, the church that he is building will be alive. It's alive in China. It's alive in Ukraine. It's alive in Russia. It's alive all over the world. They can't snuff it out because it's built to last. All of the adjustments the world wants us to make 
They're messing with the structure of the family. God created them male and female. And when you tell eight-year-olds, now, are you sure you want to be a female? Even though you're a biological female, you can choose. And if you don't want to be, we can get some surgery. You're messing with the structure of the family and even creation itself. You're messing with the structure. This is dangerous. These are perilous times. And if you don't agree with it and it goes against the core values of who you are and what you believe, you're somehow a bigot. No, I'm a person of faith who's building my family upon the Word of God, the rock-solid foundation. My, my generation, my generation put a man on the moon. This generation is putting men in women's locker rooms. That's messing with the structure. That's the skeleton. If you mess with the skeleton, the whole body collapses. And it doesn't happen overnight, but we're messing with the skeleton. This is not a, a, a evil, mean preaching. This is not uh, some kind of thing. This is not even political. This is biblical. He created them male and female. And I'm sorry. But the marriage that is built on the rock is the marriage between a man and a woman. The, the marriage that is built on the rock is the marriage that honors God and says, I believe in freedom, live like you want to live, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I cannot be silent about that. It's the structure. Anything else is sinking sand. Come on now. My God, we cannot just sit back and see the Ten Commandments malt. Thou shalt not kill. The Bible said, if the foundations are destroyed, what will a nation and a church do and the people of God do? If the foundations, the foundations are the foundations, the structure. We're removing that. We're saying, uh, thou shalt not steal, but if you want to, go in and take what you want. Because life's not fair. That gives you a right. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not sleep with your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, we don't need to be so absolute. Yes, we do. Neither is there any other name given whereby men can be saved but the name of Jesus. I don't know what to tell you. That's, that's the foundation. You cannot mess with the structure. If you mess with the structure... And, and, and what is wrong with the church is that we're allowing our foundations and our structures and we're, and we're so afraid that, that we're going to be penalized in the workplace or wherever that we're not speaking up. But as Christians, we're in a time where we have to say, mm, I'm going to stick with the sure foundation. You know, I'm going to build it like our forefathers did, even this nation. It wasn't perfect. The flesh part is not, but the, but the structure. When you start dismantling the structure, even of the Constitution, the structure of the Supreme Court, the structure of justice, the structure is going to be filled with abuses, and, but it's the structure that makes this nation great. It was built by people who came and they were not flawless. They had terrible flaws, but they came saying, we want one nation under God. On your money, in God we trust. It says that. 
Now, if you want to move that structure out, get ready for a collapse of the economy because in God we trust. Oh, God, help me to preach. And I, I picked the wrong sermon to preach for the first time in a new church, but... So be it. I'm tired, of, I'm tired of sugarcoating it, and I'm tired of being quiet. Nope, this book is right. This book is on. This book is real. This book is alive. Culture should not change the church. Culture should not change the Christian. Love everybody, but stand for what you stand. I want to ask you, because the problem is, you don't know. The sad reality is you will not know when you gave up too much until it's too late and the storm is upon you. Samson made a Nazarite vow that he would not drink wine. It was his personal conviction. It was a vow he made to God. And God said, that's the deal. I'll honor it. I won't drink wine. I won't touch dead things. I won't cut my hair. And that's my vow to you of consecration. And the next thing you know, he's drinking a little wine. He's touching dead things. There's a lion that's slain, and he's reaching down, getting honey out of it. Touching dead things. He's sleeping with his girlfriend, Delilah. Whoops. And I could see him going back in the gym. I could still press 600. You won't know when your power's left you. Once you start messing with the structure of your relationship and convictions with God. Oh, come on here now. Once you keep on compa, a little here, a little there, a little here, a little there. And then one day, the foot, you don't know, Samson, how weak you become because it can be deceiving. But suddenly the Philistine, and he wished not. He shook himself like he did other times, but it wasn't there because he had messed with the structure so much that the spirit had left. I'm simply trying to preach to you today that the structure really matters. The foundation matters. How much music Filthy music can you listen to before it affects the structure of who you are? How much filthy pornography can you look at? And in my generation, it was behind the counter, but in this generation, it's in your pocket. And I, I, I shudder for especially the young men because we, we, we didn't have access to it, but now it's there. So how long can you mess and dabble with stuff? How long can you run with the wrong friends? You still can come to church and feel God's presence. And you still, I'm not questioning your relationship with God, but what I am questioning is how long can you sustain it as you make more and more and more structural changes about who you are and the convictions of what you were raised in that you know are right, but somehow I'll shift this and change this and change this and before you know it you're not the person you used to be I tell you I, that, that fear I fear I, that's the fear of the Lord we need the fear of the Lord back in the church we need to we need to understand that anybody can fall but under him who is able to keep us from falling if we stay connected to the skeleton which is Jesus the flesh may fail but it'll always get back up. Because the structure and foundation is solid. God put Adam to sleep. And he reached in his side, opened up his side, and pulled a rib out. You know why he put Adam to sleep? Because God didn't want his opinion on how to make his bride. And I think the church ought to be, I believe the church ought to, I believe that 
God's not asking your opinion about his bride. He know, He's a carpenter, and he said, I'm going to do it with a hammer and a nail, and I don't care if you like it or not. you either going to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and receive the Holy Spirit and get into my word and love me and forgive and walk in forgiveness and holiness and separation and live for me or not. You, I don't care, but you're not going to get your opinion is not going to change this guy with the hammer and the nail building the church and creating a bride. And he forms Eve out of the structure of Adam. And he brings her to him. That was, and then Adam wakes up and he says, you're bone of my bone." Your flesh of my flesh and power comes from that structure. Did you know that the Bible said in Leviticus that the life of the flesh is in the blood? And life comes from blood and blood comes from your bones. Bone marrow is what produces blood. And, and so if, if you play around with the structure of the bones... You're going to get in trouble. The bone structure can choke off the blood supply. Don't play with the bone structure. When we put, when we put rainbow flags out in front of our church, we're playing with the structure of the church that Jesus built. And that's choking off the blood. The bone is what produces the blood. Love everybody, accept everybody. You're welcome here, but I'm not going to change the message, the structure, the foundation is repent and be baptized and be born again and the old things pass away and behold, all things become new. I could be an adulterer, but I've been born again. I could be a liar, but I've been born again. Same thing for any other lifestyle. Do you know there's a story in the Old Testament where they didn't handle the bones of a king right and God sent a famine? Because when you start changing the structure of a house and a nation and a home that God has built, it won't last. Jacob strutted into Bethel and wrestled with God. He walked in, Jacob, and wrestled with God and God said, I'm going to change you, boy. But I'm going to change you structurally first. And he pulled his hip out of joint. Read it. He wrestled and the angel pulled his hip out of joint. And God said, now that I've changed the structure of who you are, you can walk out now, Israel. I'm changing your name from Jacob to Israel. And you're going to walk away with a limp. And you're not going to walk the same way you used to walk because I've changed you structurally. You are not the same person inwardly that you used to be. That's old-fashioned repentance right there. God can change how you walk from now on. Somebody shout over that. I mean... They told you counseling couldn't change you. Nobody could change you. A program can't change you. I'm not against any of those. They can help you stay on the straight and narrow. But you have to have a structural change at some point. And the blood and the cross and the nails and the hammer of Calvary are the only things that can change you. Let me close with this. In 2 Kings, the Bible said that the Israelites were coming from a battle and one of the soldiers had been killed. And they were being chased by the enemy and so they took the corpse and threw it in a cave. And it was the cave where Elisha's bones were lying. And when the Dead soldier of a new generation touched the old bones of the old prophet. He touched the old foundation. He 
Touch the old structure. Notice this. Anytime the structure is there, resurrection power is looking for an opportunity. Resurrection is always attracted to structure. Which means if the enemy attacks you and your family, as long as you hold on to the word and hold on to the cross and hold on to the name and the power of the Holy Spirit, I can't promise you that it won't look like it's dead, but I can tell you that what draws resurrection power, it's always drawn. Yeah, it's bad, the new generation, but if they'll touch the old structure. The old hammer and nail. I don't, it's not pop, pop, pop. It's hammer and nail. The cross. And when they had the Passover lamb in Leviticus, there was a command. And Jesus fulfilled this prophecy. Said, when you eat that lamb, make sure when you cook it and when you prepare it that you do not break one of its bones. No bones on that lamb was to be broken. Isn't it amazing that when they took Jesus to Calvary and hung him on the cross, he had a thief on one side and a thief on the other side. And the soldiers, in order to speed the crucifixion process up, would break the knees of the person they were crucifying. And the Bible said the soldiers went to break the knees of the thief on one side, and they broke his knees. And they went to the other thief and broke his knees would cause the blood to go faster and cause the person to die. Notice this. On one side, one represented Adam. Broke the knees, Adam fell. The other side represented Lucifer. How do you know it represented Lucifer? Because he said, that old thief cursed Jesus and said, if you are the Son of God, that's the same word Satan used in the wilderness when when Jesus was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. So one represents the fall of Adam to sin. One represents the fall of Lucifer from heaven. And they go to break the knees of Jesus, the Passover lamb. And the Bible said that he had, they stuck a spear in his side. Watch this, a spear in his side Blood and water gush out in his side, just like Adam. Just like Adam, Eve is going to come out of his side. Blood and water, born again. He's going to get him a bride out of Adam's side. He's going to get him a bride out of Jesus' bleeding side. We are the body of Christ. We are the blood. We are the bride of Christ. But the powerful thing is when they went to break the knees of Jesus, they said there's no need to break his knees. He's already dead. Why? Because the, why couldn't they break his knees? Because the structure couldn't be messed with. And any time the structure remains, it doesn't matter how bad the situation gets. If you stay on that firm foundation, resurrection is always attracted to an unbroken foundation. And on the third day, He came up out of the grave, out of the tomb. I'm preaching the families. I'm preaching the people. Hell wants to destroy your family and your marriage, and we've been there. And I can truly say, sometimes you feel like all you got left is a skeleton. But if the structure stands, get ready for resurrection. Because God's not finished with you and your family. Mama, quit worrying. Quit being afraid. Quit worrying. If you built that foundation under your children, I tell you today, I will build my church. The man with the hammer and the nail said, and the gates of hell will not prevail. It's a guarantee. Wow.